Hi everyone, this is Mavic Paul, the Chemistry Guru. Now in this video, we want to go through drawing the von Haber cycle of ionic compounds. Now usually in questions when we are required to draw the von Haber cycle involving an ionic compound, we would use an energy level diagram to represent the von Haber cycle because a lot of the enthalpy change terms used in the von Haber cycle, they are always endothermic or they are always exothermic. So we will make use of the von Haber cycle to practice drawing an energy level diagram. So eventually it will become a standard question even though it involves quite a number of terms but you just need to remember some of these terms we should be able to draw out the energy level diagram for the von Haber cycle. So let's use calcium chloride as an example. Now we have the y-axis here. Of course the y-axis will be the enthalpy. So the first term that I usually will draw will be the elements in the standard state. So I'll put the elements here close to the bottom because later I will just need to draw one arrow that's pointing down which is the enthalpy change of formation. So what we can do is the elements, we can put it close to the bottom. So this is my elements, calcium solid and Cl2 gas. And as mentioned, because this is the element in the standard state, we need to label the enthalpy value as a zero value. The next state that I'll draw will be the ionic compound. So as mentioned, usually the enthalpy change of formation will be an exothermic term because ionic compounds, they are fairly stable because of the strong ionic bonds. So usually they are more stable than the elements in the standard state. So I'll put the compound at the bottom here. Then this, of course, will be CaCl2 in the solid state. Then this enthalpy change term, I'll draw an arrow that is pointing down. Then this will be the enthalpy change of formation. We don't have the values here. It's not that important. We just need to take note of the terms. So this will be the delta H formation of calcium chloride. So we have this sorted out. Then the next thing we want to do is we want to atomize the elements. I want to atomize the metal. Then I want to atomize the non-metal. Atomization is always endothermic because I need to supply energy to break whatever bonds that is required to form individual gaseous atoms. So usually we will do the atomization of the metal first. So it will be somewhere here. So this will be atomizing of calcium solid to calcium gas. So the non-metal is a remainder. So we just put it unchanged first. Then this arrow here will be the atomization of calcium. So I'll draw the arrow that's pointing up for endothermic process. This is the atomization of calcium. So the next arrow that we'll draw will be atomizing the non-metal. So again, atomization is always endothermic. So I'll draw the next arrow still pointing upwards. Then what I'll form is calcium gas and 2Cl gas. So basically, calcium gas to calcium gas, there's no change. The change is involving Cl2 to 2-chlorine atom. So this arrow here will be the atomization of chlorine. But usually in questions, they don't give atomization of the non-metal because they can also give us the bond energy value for Cl, Cl bond. So maybe for this exercise, we will just use the bond energy for chlorine. So if I want to quantify this term involving the bond energy of Cl, Cl bond, then how will I modify this coefficient? Now bond energy is with respect to per mole of the bond that we are breaking. So if we are talking about bond energy, then the reference point would be Cl2. So if Cl2 here is coefficient 1, because in 1 Cl2 there's 1 Cl, Cl bond, then the bond energy term, the coefficient will be 1. If the question gives us atomization of chlorine, then how will we modify this term? So if you are given atomization of chlorine instead of bond energy, then the reference point will change. Atomization is with respect to per mole of atom that you are forming. So you notice the number of mole of chlorine atom form is 2. So therefore the atomization term, I will need to modify by 2 times. Atomization will have to follow the coefficient of the number of mole of atoms that we are forming. So these two actually, they are the same quantity. So in questions, they'll either give you atomization of chlorine, which is not very common. Usually 
we will make use of the bond energy of CLCL bond that we can find inside the data booklet. So we have this sorted out. So now we're here, we have the gaseous atoms. The next thing we want to do is, I want to ionize the metal. I want to pluck out the electron from the metal, then I want to give it to the non-metal. So that will involve ionization energy for calcium. Now for calcium, we want to form Ca2+. So basically it will be the first ionization energy plus the second ionization energy. Usually for ionization energies, we can lump them together because both ionization energy terms, the concept is the same. It is the energy required for me to overcome the attraction between the nucleus and the valence electron. So whether we are talking about first IE, second IE, third IE, the concept is the same. So we can put them together into one big arrow. We don't need to break it down into stages. So for calcium, what we have is I'll put it all the way here. Usually what I'll do is I'll draw a slightly longer arrow for ionization energy because usually the magnitude is the largest. So this will give me calcium 2 plus cation, two electrons, and two chlorine atom. As mentioned, this will be the first plus second ionization energy for calcium. All right, next, I want to put the electron into the non-metal. So that will be involving first electron affinity. Now, usually the magnitude for electron affinity will be smaller than ionization energy. So the arrow that is pointing up for ionization energy will be longer than the arrow that is pointing down for electron affinity. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that later this arrow that we're drawing that's pointing down will be shorter than the arrow that is pointing up. Usually that will be the case. So I can put in this term here. This will be calcium 2 plus gas. Then I'll have 2Cl minus gas, gaseous ions. As mentioned, this arrow that is pointing down, this is the electron affinity for Cl. So from Cl to Cl minus, this is the first electron affinity for Cl. Now in terms of the coefficient, what I have is now I have 2Cl to 2Cl minus. So what I need to do is I need to modify this coefficient by two times because the coefficient for the first electron affinity will follow the coefficient for the atoms that you're adding the electron to. So now we are here, gaseous ions. So finally, we have one big arrow here from gaseous ions to ionic compound. So that will be our lattice energy. So lattice energy is all the way down. This arrow here will represent the lattice energy for calcium chloride. Now remember lattice energy is defined as the energy release when one mole of ionic compound is formed from the constituent gaseous ions. So it should be an exothermic term. You're forming the ionic bond. So therefore energy is released. It should be exothermic. So the energy level diagram is here. Now what we want to do is we want to apply Hess's law to try to link all these terms up. So the cycle clockwise direction is here. And then we have to look at the terms which are clockwise and which are the terms that are counterclockwise. And what I will do is I'll make use of this idea. All the clockwise arrows is equal to all the counterclockwise arrows. Now, if you notice the bond haver cycle, only enthalpy change of formation is counterclockwise. So enthalpy change of formation is counterclockwise. Atomization is actually clockwise. Bond energy is clockwise. Ionization energy is clockwise. Electron affinity is clockwise. Lattice energy is also clockwise. Again, if you follow the direction that I'm pointing, you notice all these terms, atomization, bond energy, ionization energy, electron affinity, and lattice energy, they're all pointing in the same direction. Only formation is pointing in the opposite direction. So what we can do is when we apply Hess's law for a bond Haber cycle, we can just make use of this outcome. The enthalpy change of formation is equal to the summation of the rest of the terms. So this is important. You notice for bond Haber cycle, only enthalpy change of formation is pointing in the opposite direction. All the rest of the arrows are all pointing in the same direction. So this will apply to any ionic compound. So I think it's useful to remember this expression. All right, I hope that this video will help us better remember how to draw the energy level diagram of a bond Haber cycle. If you learned something useful from this video, please give me the thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more weekly video lessons. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.